Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, the market balanced in a narrow range. And if we look over the last three to four sessions, we can see that the market has been contracting the ranges and is in a very balanced state. Typically, this results in a directional move. And today we do have a couple of economic catalysts that can trigger that move. So we have the oil number at 9.30 a.m. Central Time. And then more importantly, we have the FOMC announcement at 1 p.m. And those are possible catalysts for a directional move outside of the recent range. Now, looking at the other markets, we know that NQ was weak overnight, but that's primarily due to Apple. And NQ is trading near some decent support. So that's a spot where buyers can step in. And if we look at the Russell, we can see that it's actually gaining some strength here since yesterday. And on the larger time frames, the buyers continue to be in control and more dominant. So heading into the open, holding above 79.5 to 81.5 would leave the buyers in control. And uh, even though we're in a very balanced state, above the initial support zone, the buyers would still be more dominant. And on the upside, 89.5 to 91.5 is the important short-term inflection point. That's the area that would need to be taken out in order to trigger a breakout and attract more buyers in the market. Now on the upside above 89 half to 91 half, we have 96 half to 98 half, which uh, can quite easily be tested. We would have to be cautious on fading that zone if we're breaking out on strong volume and momentum. And beyond that, we could even test 03 quarter to 05 quarter. On the downside, a break below 79 half would bring the 75 half high volume node into play and 71 to 73, which is still a spot where responsive buyers can be active, especially if the zone is being tested ahead of the FOMC announcement. Below that, we have larger time frame support at 64 to 66 half and 57 half to 59 half. And since the larger time frame bias continues to be bullish, those are still areas where responsive buyers can be active. So unless we were heading down in a trend down fashion, which, uh, is not the expectation buyers can still be active at the zones below but uh, of course if it's a uh, news driven uh, move then we'd have to be a little more careful so if it's right on the FOMC announcement you know then we know that the first 10 to 15 minutes can be a bit hectic and crazy after the announcement so we'd have to be cautious during that time frame but from a location perspective those are decent enough zones for uh, buyers to be active there and if you know, the NASDAQ is really exhausted and hitting even better support by then, then it would just raise the odds for buyers to be active at 57.5 to 59.5 and 64 to 66 half. So those are really the main ideas heading into the open. The market's in a very balanced state. It could be going directional today, uh, mainly this afternoon, off of the FOMC announcement. And, uh, you know, ahead of that, it makes sense to be careful and cautious simply because we could continue to balance within a range ahead of the announcement and then we get a directional move. So early in the morning, uh, you know, we're going to be careful. We're going to use initial support to establish our short term directional bias off the open. A break of that zone would tell us that now sellers are gaining dominance and uh, we'll have to adjust our bias accordingly. So those are the main thoughts. Let's see whether the buyers can really maintain control in this market and let's see if buyers can really step in into NQ as well, you know, that would strengthen the case for a upside move. So those are the main ideas for the day. Let's see if the buy side can maintain short-term control here, and we'll take it from there.